Hi, I'm Rebecca Britton, and I am running for re-election in Downingtown Area School District, Region 4. School boards are the bedrock of our communities. They affect our children, our taxes, our neighborhoods, and our futures. Yet when election time comes around, there's often very little coverage about the candidates and the office itself. Therefore, Indivisible and Chester County Marching Forward would like to help by introducing you to some of the candidates running for school board this year. So Rebecca, please tell us a little bit about yourself and tell us why you're running for school board. First, I just wanna thank everyone um, at Indivisible and Chester County Marching Forward as well as you for having me here today. I'm very excited for this opportunity. Um, a little bit about myself. Um, I first moved here seven years ago, uh, two years into my experience uh, in the district. I thought, you know, there are so many things that I feel could have been better from the time that I was in school. And I had such a great education and we moved here because we thought and it is a wonderful school district. And I just thought, how can we keep improving on that system? And when it came time to make the decision, I thought of a very famous quote by Evan Grewal. And the quote is, I realized if you can change a classroom, you can change a community. And if you change enough of communities, you can change the world. And the idea that every year we have 13,000 students in the district, and the decisions we make can help shape their future. It's just really inspiring. Yeah, well, that was so inspiring. It makes me think, oh my gosh, you've been in this district less than I have, um, and you've done so much. So thank you very much. <laughs> and I'm glad to have you on the school board. So I do know that you are a current school board member. Um, can you just expand on what your top three priorities are? Downingtown is in a state of really high, uh, high growth. And what that means to our community is that our schools are, many of our elementary schools are at, above, or near capacity. On the west side of our district, we are facing a big influx of people. People wanna move here. It's a great place to live. It's a great school to be in. Um, we have a unique opportunity in that we are the only district in Chester County that does not have all day kindergarten. And finally, we have a mental health issue that we're dealing with. Uh, we've made some inroads there, but we still have more work to do. And we're looking at the possibility of late school start times. Again, this is for the mental health of our students. So their unique challenges and doing, um, being a new family in the community, we moved here because we're a young family. Uh, we're working class, blue collar family. I'm a stay at home mom. So there is a unique opportunity to really strengthen our school's district and to do it with a creative lens on so we can balance the budget for working families. Well, you, you hit so many uh, great points there. Um, as a taxpayer, you know, balancing the budget and worrying about that fiscal responsibility is huge. So it's nice to hear that um, even though you have a lot of these uh, strategic priorities that you do have that in the back of your mind. I will say that full day kindergarten, while my own children are um, high school and one has already graduated out, um, so it won't impact me, I would be 100% on board with that. When we moved here 10 years ago, my children were in full day uh, preschool. And um, I moved here and it's um, half day kindergarten. And so that was a big shock. Um, luckily, I was able to stay at home uh, with them. So um, I understand that I had that privilege, but it would be nice for working families to um, get their children into kindergarten. Plus it just really sets the, the bar and the foundation for those students. So I, I love that that's um, part of what you really want to, to bring to uh, Chester County and specifically to Downingtown. So um, with those priorities, they are definitely um, lofty goals. Um, what do you think your biggest strengths are that you would bring to the table? And how do you see those strengths benefiting all the constituents that you serve? 
So first, I believe my biggest strength is my courage. I always want to stick my neck out when it matters to families, to students, um, to our educators. The second thing I think that I, I bring to the table is I'm a dreamer. I, I do believe that when we can put our heads together um, as a collective and we can think about possibilities and creative ways, anything is possible. And that's just part of who I am at my core. Um, and third is that I like to communicate with integrity. I will never tell people what they want to hear. I will always have the the more delicate and the more intricate language. Nothing should be framed as either or ors. We can do hard things. We can do hard things, absolutely. I have to say, I can't believe you said anything is possible. So um, I'm not sure if I told you or if you're aware, but I actually am a teacher. And right now my district is working on um, social and emotional uh, language, right? And so this week, this whole month, we are talking about anything is possible and to dream big, right? Not just to dream, but to dream big. And um, I love that you're kind of hitting all of those points because I do think that um, having students in the classroom talking about it and getting them to dream um, so that anything is possible is so huge. And you bring that to the school board and remind adults, because sometimes we do have to remind adults that as as adults, you know, our lives aren't over, right? Like we can still dream and imagine the world uh, that we want and then go out and get it. So I really did appreciate that for your answer. Thank you so much. Oh, excuse me. Okay, so... Um, like I mentioned, I do know that you are already on the school board. So what um, what priorities of the school board um, do, you, do you think you would be able to tackle right now? We're in a great place to tackle all of these things, I feel. Um, we are a very blessed district. We have done a tremendous job saving and balancing the budget over the years. We have $95 million in our bank account. We're a triple A rated agency. And that is in the whole of the United States, a very unique place to be as a school district. And what that means is that as we tackle these unique challenges, we can keep our loan to cash on hand ratio very low. And we're gonna be able to build, we have to build um, additions onto East, west and to create space in our elementary schools as well as do the all day k we are going to have to build a new five six center is the way that the, the board has been looking so we are getting set to um launch these big ideas and they are already in place and i have the courage to see it through now i just wanted to hit on something really quickly and i, I feel it's really important you said earlier as a taxpayer, two things that really resonated with me. First, you said you were worried about learning gaps when your children were younger. And how that translate is dollars. And I think taxpayers, even like yourself, who don't have, and myself, I don't have children that are of age of kindergarten. That time has well passed. When we invest in early education, for every dollar we invest, we get four to nine dollars back. And if we don't meet the challenges of our children, if they have learning gaps by the age of third grade, the chances are they're going to be having those gaps for the rest of their school career. So these, these steps now to invest in early education are gonna save you the taxpayer money later on. And I, and I just wanna say the last part about that is that um, you wanna keep your home's value. Right. And so there's something to be said about the attractiveness of a school district when you are the only school district in the county without an all decade program. Yeah, I'll be honest with you. I didn't even realize that we were the only ones in Chester County that um, didn't have all day kindergarten. So you're right. That is very telling. Um, I will say about that, that home value. Right. Um, I grew up in a family of educators. My mother is an educator. All of my aunts are educators. Um, and when my husband and I 
didn't have children and we were looking for places to live, I always started with the school district. I was like, okay, what's the school district? Because if the school district is strong, your housing value will stay strong. Um, and I've always understood that. So I totally, as a taxpayer, appreciate that you got your pulse on exactly what's going on in Chester County as far as um, where that gap is. And, and you're right, um, that gap will will definitely um, start to uh, hit us home right in that pocketbook. So um, I appreciate you having the courage to go out and say that we definitely need full day kindergarten. <laughs> okay, so um, one thing I would I um, do want to ask is, given the state of school boards, um, and sometimes recently they've been quite contentious. Um, how are you dealing with that, with all those loud voices in the room? Long ago, I've developed a growth mindset, and um, I, I tend to believe that a lot of this anger is directed specifically at myself, unfortunately, um, not in our district. And I feel like um, people that are very capable, they tend to, to, to bear the brunt. And so while this is a nationwide problem, um, it's difficult on the individual level. And what really pains my heart is that, you know, for the majority of this role, we're unpaid. It's a tremendous amount of responsibility, which is already very stressful in, in and of itself. Um, and like any person, don't we all just wanna be liked and accepted? And um, I'm just really, the thing that, that sustains me through this, and I hope that it sustains other board members is to have a positive impact on our kids. And over the last couple of months, it's my fourth year on the board, I've got to meet lots of our seniors and I've talked to them about their school experience. And I gotta tell you, they might've made me a little weepy at times because I see the, the things we've put into place over the last four years starting to affect our children. And man, they just make me so proud. Oh, that's so I, wonderful. I your question. <laughs> that, that was a great answer though. And I think that your passion and your belief in our children has come through. And um, definitely we need a lot of that on the, on the school board. And to always remember that it is children first, right? And that's why you are doing this. Um, that's why I do it as a teacher. That's why you're doing it as a, as a, as a mother and as a school board member. So I do appreciate that. And it is an unpaid uh, position and um, so important, it's vital. And that's why we're doing this um, because sometimes uh, people have no idea who's running and what their values are and where, you know, if they can see where um, the community and the schools need to go. Um, and just through your answers, I can see that you are passionate about those, uh, about all of our children, um, that you are committed and you've got grit and courage. And look, you had me at anything is possible. So <laughs> I think that's fantastic. But before I let you go, I do want to ask you one question. What would you like um, anyone to know about you that we wouldn't readily be able to find if we were to look you up on Facebook or in LinkedIn? So I don't like this question. I I'm like, what do I say about myself? Um, I push myself very hard. I am very critical of making sure that I'm, I'm honest, that I'm open. Um, sometimes I have to be very tough in the boardroom. And I guess the biggest thing is that if people understood who I am at my core, and I think of myself as a friendly, funny, you know, a warm person who's, who wants to be around people. And um, that doesn't come across in the boardroom. So I, I just want them to know like, I am your neighbor and um, you can reach out to me. I'll have you on my porch. We'll talk and you will leave my friend because I, I, I enjoy being around people and, and I enjoy that. So.
Well, I love that. And I might be dating myself with Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. But, um, you know, you're, you, that's just what popped into my head, um, that you're my neighbor and I appreciate you. Um, so thank you so much for uh, spending some time with me. Um, I definitely did get that, that warmth feeling from you. So um, good luck with your candidacy. Thank you. Thank you so much.